So today we're going to talk about evaluating and graphing polynomial functions. And before we start talking about these graphs, I want to just do a really quick overview and recap of what we talked about in Blackboard assignment number 11. So in lesson one, part one, we talked about what a polynomial was and um, how to identify different parts of the polynomial, such as the degree, whether or not it's in standard form, um, as well as that leading coefficient. So to start us off, we're just going to kind of review a couple key concepts. The first is a polynomial is a monomial, or a sum of monomials, with real number coefficients. So we talked about, the last time um, we talked about these notes, we, we really dove into whether or not a polynomial or a given expression was in fact a polynomial. So kind of remember back to Blackboard assignment number 11. We also talked about standard form, and a polynomial is in standard form if its terms are written in descending order from left to right. Remember, descending is from highest to least, so that um, exponent should be in descending order. So I gave you guys an example in these notes, f of x is equal to 9x cubed minus 4x squared plus 7. And this is in standard form since since we're starting off with degree 3, or our um, highest exponent being a cube, and going down in descending order. So since it's in standard form, there's a couple things that we can pull out from this polynomial. The first is the leading coefficient is always your leading number. So it's not the whole term, but it's going to be that leading number, which is 9. So your leading coefficient in this example is 9. Your degree is your highest exponent, which should be part of your first term, which is 3. And we know that degree 3's give us a cubic function. We also talked about the different types of polynomials, starting with constants and degree 0 all the way through um, degree 4, which are called quartics. So at the very bottom, I gave you, and I actually filled in for you already, the different examples going along with the different degrees that we have for polynomials. So starting out, if we have degree 0, we know that that's a constant, so we know that there's going to be no variable involved. So one example of that would be f of x is equal to 7. The next degree, which is 1, gives us a linear function, and we know this to be f of x is equal, we also know this to be mx plus b, but I put a um, there. So it really doesn't matter if it's m or a, it just means that there's going to be a um, real number coefficient. So this example is f of x is equal to 7x plus 2. That's an example of a linear um, function. Number 2 is called a, uh, degree 2 is called a qu um, quadratic, and you know that to be your x squares. So here's an example of what a quadratic in standard form would be. Degree 3 is called a cubic. And remember, you don't have to have every single term present in order for it to be a cubic. You just need to have the x to the third power. Just like for a quadratic, you have to have x squared. And for linear, you have to have the variable x. And for a constant, you just have a number. So in this example, f of x is equal to 7x cubed is actually a cubic function. It doesn't have to have any other terms behind it. And lastly, degree 4 is called a quartic function, and there's an example of 7x to the 4th plus 2x squared plus 1, which is an example of a quartic function. So that was just kind of an overview um, of what we talked about the last time when we introduced polynomials in class. So moving forward, today we're going to actually talk about the graphs of these polynomial functions. So we're going to kind of dive in a little bit and introduce what the graphs look like. And when you graph a polynomial function, there's really two things that we need to look at. The first is where your graph turns. And the next is called the end behavior. Your end behavior. We're going to talk both of about both of them in a little bit. Your end behavior is pretty self-explanatory. You're looking at the ends of your graph and how they're behaving. So your end behavior 
is what happens to your f of x, which you guys know to be fancy for your y value. What really happens to your y as your x gets very large or very small. So your end behavior depends on the degree of your polynomial function as well as your leading coefficient. That's why it's really important that you know what a degree is and how to find your leading coefficient because they're going to actually help you determine your end behavior. So in your notes, you're given three graphs f of x is equal to x, f of x is equal to x cubed, and f of x is equal to x to the fifth power. And in all three of them, there's a couple key things that happen. The first is we notice that each graph above, the leading coefficient is positive. More explicitly, it's actually 1 in this case, but it's a positive 1. And your degree is odd. And if you remember what odd numbers are, odd numbers start with, and we can write this down, odd numbers start with 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, and continue going. Your even numbers, if you remember, are your 2, 4, 6, 8, and those continue to go. Now if you notice, in these three graphs up at the top, your first one is a linear function. So you have your arrows that are attached by a straight line. Now in the other two, if you look at the arrows and how they're pointing, your arrows are actually, you have a bottom left arrow and a top right arrow. And in the other two graphs, if I circled them, if I actually took my pen and connected the two arrows, you would get a positive slope in both of those graphs. So we're going to talk a little bit about end behavior of polynomial functions um, and four different types that you could actually get. So in this case, before we, we move on to those four different scenarios, in this case, if you look at your three, your three graphs, your f of x, which is your y um, axis, is up top, and your x is obviously your horizontal axis. So if you're looking at your, your graph right here, in the case, um, in these three cases, your f of x value, if you're watching your graph, as your f of x, which is your y, and I'll do this in green, as it gets bigger, so it approaches positive infinity, so as you're going up, your x is actually increasing and growing to positive infinity. So in these three cases, as your y approaches positive infinity, which is this guy right here, I'll actually write it out, positive infinity, your x value gets bigger and bigger and bigger, so it continues to grow as well. So your end behavior is telling you what happens to your graph over a large scale of time, or, or however we're looking at it, what happens to these arrows as they continue going on and on and on. So in the next video, we're going to talk about that end behavior and the four different um, types.